Hey guys, welcome back. It was 70 degrees, almost 80 degrees yesterday. Today we are quickly going into the 70s and it really felt like the property just changed overnight. There are songbirds and geese, I even heard peepers on the pond last night. So yeah, I figured I would take you on a tour around the garden and talk about where we're going to be planting certain things this year and in just our general garden plans. Very soon we will be starting our commercial herb bed so let's go walk around the property and I'm sure my cat Chucky will be joining us as he normally does. He loves to follow me around the property. Hi. Just talking about you, bud. He is in almost every single one of my videos. He's kind of a star that way. Um, Chucky is a Maine Coon cat. He would have done really well as a barn cat. He does go inside with us uh, during the winter um, and he's kind of an indoor outdoor cat but uh, he would have made an amazing barn cat. Often on really warm days I'll just see him laying in a pile of hay and it could even be raining out and he's just totally content to just be outside and be in nature. Hey buddy. Hi. <laughs> Good boy. All right, you ready to go? It's hard to believe that this used to all be open field. Every year our garden grows and grows. In this bed, we're planting potatoes. Yukon Golds in one and red or russets in the other. I've yet to decide. This bed is where we grew last year's potatoes, but this year it will be sown thick with green beans and chamomile in the middle. The chamomile I'm experimenting with as a way to treat the soil for potato blight. Next year, we will grow potatoes in the middle bed again and see how it performs. Next is our brassicas bed. Cabbages, Brussels sprouts, and broccoli get hit hard in our garden by cabbage moth and cabbage worm, which are the same insect but at different stages in their life. For now, these cabbages are covered with a fine mesh mosquito netting, but we plan to build taller cages when it's finally time to plant the broccoli, which grows considerably taller than the cabbage. And in this bed we grew shell beans last year. This year it will be garlic. Lots and lots of garlic. We already planted two of the cells last autumn, but I'll be planting more this spring. The spring plantings won't be ready this year, but will help to provide lots of garlic next summer. The varieties of garlic we're growing are chestnut, Wayne's Red, elephant garlic, and some store-bought garlic that I'm experimenting with. And this raised bed that's made from a galvanized fire ring contains asparagus. As you can probably tell, the soil sunk down quite a bit over the winter, so we'll see how those asparagus fared soon enough. Around the asparagus, you'll notice that I have a heavy layer of straw mulch. Once removed, I'll be planting sweet potatoes around the asparagus bed. Sweet potatoes like it hot, so I'm hoping that I'll be done harvesting the asparagus by the time the slips are planted. This is my in-ground no-dig bed that I'm quite proud of. Last year it was planted with the three sisters. I fed this bed with a lot of chopped up leaves and mowed lawn trimmings, and the worms made quick work of it all. I found that they like to congregate around the old roots of the corn, so I've left those intact for the worms to enjoy. And our final in-ground no-dig bed rests at the foot of the hill. I grew many different things in this bed last year, from green beans to leeks to potatoes, and they all did pretty well. This year I will be planting primarily leeks and maybe a few extra cabbages that I'll keep covered with mesh netting or garden cloth. Straw makes an excellent mulch that slowly feeds the soil and also prevents weeds from getting established. I will pull back the straw just enough to plant, but leave most of it in place right where it is. Now let's go to the top of the hill, to the garden that surrounds our outdoor living space. What used to be an empty plot of wind-scarred soil, we've built up with rockscaping and windbreaks over time. I love working with rocks. We've added in some cold-hardy ornamentals like Hugo Pines, a juniper bonsai, 
We even have some mullein growing in the dry outcroppings. It looks like a few survived over winter, and last year's leaves make a wonderfully soft mulch. I have no idea what this is, and whatever this was, it's dead. So behind me here is my second oldest raised bed. We've been working with this raised bed for three years and this will be our fourth year. Every year we have it just completely full of plants. It's really well shaded and I like to do chop and drop in this bed as well. So I'm pretty sure it has lots of organic nutrients, lots of worm activity. And then of course, at the end of the season, we cover it with a really thick mulch of straw. So I like to use this raised bed for my cake uh, Swiss chard and I also like to interplant or companion plant leeks in this bed. It's easy to get to. I don't have to walk very far. It's just right in my backyard and um, kale and Swiss chard also last a pretty long time. They're, they're frost hardy um, so I can just come out here, get some salad greens for dinner, wash them up, and then we have uh, a nice side dish with our dinner. You'll also notice that there are chives growing in certain corners. When we built this bed, it's on the hillside. Um, not all of the spots are like straight down. Some of them have rock ledges. And so I didn't want that space to be wasted. So I figured I would plant some chives there in the shallow spots and they've been doing extremely well. And I look forward to seeing those very pretty purple flowers sometime in May. Chives, like any member of the Allium family, are a great pest deterrent. So I like to have the chives and the uh, the leeks in this garden as those help to kind of distract pests from my kale and swiss chard um, and it's been moderately effective we definitely still have issues with pests but i do still find that they are excellent companion plants so yeah i am going to weed this bed out maybe i'll find a few dandelion roots that i can dry and use for medicine and then we'll get started planting some swiss chard and some kale I love how colorful this garden is during the summer. It really makes a lovely statement piece in the backyard. Also, every year I get to nerd out about how rich and fertile the soil here is. So I hope you enjoy shots of dirt and worms. You will be getting a lot of those this year. So right now these leeks here are hardening off. I also want them to get a, a bit bigger. I'd like them to be, I don't know, just under pencil sized, though I think they might go on the ground sooner than that. The nice thing about leeks is you can plant them like this, almost like you're planting grass, and they have very strong roots and they don't mind being closely spaced together. I have not found that to be true for my onions, <laughs> but uh, these leeks will be going in the middle of this bed, I'll do three rows, and you can already see where two rows used to be. So I left these ones in the ground. I'm trying to overwinter them. It looks like they survived. The leeks don't produce seed until their second year, and I would really like to seed save from my own leek supply. So the leeks that you see in the bed already are a variety called Tadorna leek. The ones that I have here are bandit leeks. From their description, they'll grow a bit shorter than the Tadorna leeks, and they're also, I think, more frost hardy, which is perfect for this region because I would like to be able to continue harvesting leeks into December without having to remove them from the ground or do any canning or dehydrating. I really like to eat some greens that are still fresh all the way up till December. Oh, he seems interested in the leeks as well. Not all of these are going to go in this bed here. A lot of those are going to go down by the hillside where I showed you that last bed. Um, that was another spot that did really well for growing leeks and I want to try that again. 
That's it for today. I didn't want to make this video too long, but stay tuned very soon for my next video where we will discuss at length two new additions to the herb garden, a rock garden centerpiece down in the field and the commercial garden where I'll be making bulk ingredients to turn into medicinal teas to sell to you folks very, very soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.